Hey everybody, Caleb here. Welcome back to the shop. Thank you for joining me again. Today I want to talk about a topic I've been excited to share for a very long time. I just haven't got a chance to get it out there. Uh, it's how to do some simple carving with files on wood, micarta, or similar materials that can add a whole lot of artistry to your handmade knives, to your briar pipes, to anything like that you may be working with. If you want to add a little bit of artistry and carving to it, these are some very simple techniques you can use to add the next level of dynamic artistic expression to your work. Thank you for joining me again. Let's get into it. Okay, the project for today, I'm actually going to be working on this little skein do that I've got on the bench right now, and it has a micarta handle. Everything I'm going to show you actually applies um, for wood or any similar projects or any similar type of uh, materials. I've used it in micarta, I've used it in wood, I've used it in ivory, I've used it in fossil walrus, I've used it in usik, um, I use it in my pipes, I use it in my daggers, my handmade knives, um, any wood projects I may have that I want to add just a little bit of pop, a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of that expression to maybe some design elements to it really simply and this is just a basic carving technique with hand files all right so i'm not going to cover the more complicated aspects of um, like rotary tool carving in this video this is just going to be a simple um, carving technique to add details and simple line elements to any type of hard material that you would use for handle material or similar um, this is vintage micarta i've already got it glued up i've got my handle rough shaped okay so that's where i'm starting with and this my handle's rough shaped I've, I've taken it up to about 600 grit and i've got my overall dimensions of the handle down okay we'll discuss design here in a minute let me just lay out the tools for you though most of what i use are these habilis grobe files i have them both in a let's see these are from glarden belorb habilis files swiss made all right, so the medium grits, they're not really aggressive like a, a, a scraping file, you know, with big teeth on it. This is like a medium. So this is what you're going to do most of your work with. And I have them in various shapes. I have the diamond or the triangle. I have the flat with the, with the um, you know, concave side. I have square. Definitely need a square. And then I have uh, the rectangle. Or, well, square, rectangle. And you can also use stuff like these chainsaw files. They're just simple little round files. And they're just about aggressive enough. The medium grits, they're, they're, they're good for metals. You can, you can actually use this material or these techniques on metal as well, but we're just gonna cover softer materials. Um, so I've got them in multiple sizes or shapes, blade shapes, but I've only got them in two grits. So there's a medium and a fine. The fine is what I do the finish and fine tune work with to really clean up the scratches, to clean up the uh, the, the carving itself, and to um, get my final shape down before I go into hand sanding. The other major aspect of this, the major um, tool you'll need, tape. I use this kind of tape, the um, electrical tape. Uh, I like it in different colors so I can see it easier depending on the handle material, and then a blue tape, and these mask, just regular old painter's masking tape. This is how you do your layout lines. All right, so this is where your foundation is and just getting the design on your handle um, in a way that you can use these as a guide for your cut. After that, the rest of it, sandpaper. Simple as that. The rest of it is just sandpaper. I prefer Indasa USA. Um, it's a Portuguese company. It's called Rhino Wet Red Line. And I use everything from, you know, 80 grit up to 2,500 grit, I think they have, or 3,000 grit. I love their paper. It lasts a really long time. Um, so I, I'll go through all the grits as I work through the design on this thing. But yeah, that's it. I mean, you do that and you work your way with those tools and you can come up with some really dynamic carving and, and um, some interesting looking uh, designs and patterns that you can carve simply into your handmade knife or your pipe or whatever it is you're working on. All right, first let's talk work holding. Work holding, you're gonna need a vise of some kind. Now this is a really nice swivel vise that I have that I can I can twist it around, you know, multiple directions like this. And this really, really helps with getting into the shapes as you carve them. Um, but it's not completely necessary. I actually used this for a lot of years, this manky piece of crap. Um, I would use, this is Kydex that I've just duct taped to a piece of pipe I had laying around and I would 
get my blade in here and I would heat heat it down, you know, heat the kydex around it and mold it to the blade after I've taped the blade off um, so that I, I have something I can actually hold the knife with like that. Okay, and then I would just put this in a regular old vise and then I could twist it around like this to get to the different angles and sides of the knife as I'm carving. Um, so this is actually a really functional option. I did all of my knives with this that I've ever carved up until I bought this about a month ago. So I've been using this for like 10, 12 years now. Um, it's nasty, manky piece of crap, but it actually worked really well in just a regular bench of ice you can get at just about any hardware store. So um, I have since upgraded, and this definitely makes my life way more easy. The purpose of carving is to give, it, give yourself an attractive or appealing enhancement to a knife. Like to make a knife handle look better, make it look cool give it some something interesting and intriguing and dynamic to look at in the handle right instead of just plain handle material it's just a little bit of artistry you can add so when you're designing if you look at these two here i usually draw these out um a couple different iterations of the handle and i'll find my basic handle shape first and then i'll start playing with lines that will look good on it that i think may go with the flow or go with the form of the handle and i try to keep it as simple as i can for this because getting too complicated you know uh it may not work out that well so i'm a fan of complicated or uncomplicated um simple and abstract designs now i have done a lot of fully symmetrical designs this way um especially on daggers and stuff which i'll show here and they're really time consuming to do. They're a lot of fun to do, but they're very time consuming. So you have to keep that in mind as you're working. Um, do you want to go crazy with it? Now, I personally prefer something a little more abstract, a little more asymmetrical, and I think you can get away with it when done well. This is one that I'm currently working on, and this is the knife we're going to use for the project here. Now, I've already started my main three cuts here. And these are the main three cuts that go with, I thought just kind of worked with the design and the flow. Um, they're going to feel good in the hand. They'll give you a little positive purchase and everything. This is a skein do, so it's a non-traditional skein do. This is my iteration, my interpretation of it um, that I like. Just kind of more modern. So these are the first three cuts, but I actually have another part of the design that we're going to work on here um, that's going to go this direction. So I, it's only going to be... Uh, carving on one side and it'll flow briefly over to the other side back here now This why I've chosen to do it on this side of the knife is because it is called the omote side on Japanese uh, Bladesmithing the omote side is the presentation side So if you are wearing your blade as they would traditionally Down on the left hand side with blade edge up and back This presentation side would be out. Okay now in the traditional Scottish sense, this is actually going to be inside my calf right here, um, against my calf this side, because I'll be down in my sock, in my, um, you know, my hose like that uh, underneath my flashes. So, you know, take it for what it is. I choose to do most of my design and carving if I'm going asymmetrically on the emote side. All right. So I've already got these three, these three stripes cut and rough filed in. So I've done them with the coarse or medium grit file. So let me get this back in here, and we're going to start working our way around the other side. All right, I've got my uh, lights really washed out right now, but I really want you to be able to see what I'm doing here in the layout phase. Sometimes this phase is easier to do freehand than in the vise. My next bit of lines is actually going to go... My next bit of lines, I'm actually going to... I want to bring from the belly of the knife up over, over the spine kind of a complementary crossing shape here. I'm going to do three stripes this way. Um, for the top. So I kind of want to flare it a little bit here. This is where the next bit of my line is going to go. And I usually stair step these. I work my way one line at a time. So when I did this cut, these three cuts, I actually lined out this with my layout tape, carved that in, came stepped down so I could see what I'm looking at, lined that out, and I'm actually doing my carvings on top or my relief in the carving on top of the line. Um, I like doing my reliefs up and away from the line on towards the spine of a knife because of the way they catch the light It's really cool in some aspects Sometimes if I'm rounding it or feathering and doing different things. I may take it below the cut below the line um, But the thing to remember here is to lay your tape On the opposite side of which way you want your cut to flow from so on this knife. I think I think it will be more dynamic if I 
since I have the cuts going away from the line on the spine, then on my belly cuts from my belly lines, I'm gonna have it coming down to the belly. So let's do that. I'm gonna take my tape here. And I did not cut enough tape, so let's get another. Be generous, this stuff's cheap. All right, so let's start here. And you want to lay these down as smoothly as possible. And the way I like the electrical tape to start is because it has some flex in it. So I can move it around, look at it from the profile, and look at the cut. Alright, I need to put a little more belly into it. Let's put some more belly and bring it up. Yeah, there we go. And that's going to terminate right on the back ridge here. So... that down. Now I'm going to look at it and make sure that I have a good, clean, smooth curve going this way. All right, that I've cleanly curved it in there. See that? See if it'll catch this. Come on. There we go. So you can see that it's smooth and creamy curves into the handle there very nicely. So I'm going to push that down a little bit more. my lovely dog up there barking yeah it looks good okay so now so that I can see my line a little better I'm gonna cover it with the blue tape and this actually helps you build a wall that you can run your file up against so tape off what you don't want to scratch that's a good rule of thumb going forward in this project right. there we go we've got that line laid out. I'm going to put one more piece of tape just so I have a little bit extra of a wall. Something nice and sturdy to back that file onto. That's nice. We've got a nice little layout there for the first cut. So I'm going to get this back in the vise and we're going to start making that cut. All right, I'm trying to get in here as easy as I can or as best I can with the camera to see this. It's a little awkward having that thing right under my elbow. So what I'm going to do is start with my uh, my Habilis Swiss Made number one. So the double lot is the coarser of the two. The number one is the finer of the two. Um, and I start with the triangle file. So I'm just going to make this initial cut starting from the back, gently going against my tape here. All right, and I've got some ridges I need to cross, so... Just kind of drawing a line. In the first phase, you really want to go as gentle as possible because you don't want to go too aggressive and start making gouges all over the place. So just get a line cut using the tape wall there as your guide. I actually used to use this technique, uh, the tape technique, I learned on striping, painting, graphic designs on private aircraft, of all places. We used to use these just huge long fuselages we used to paint. Um, just working in a little bit backwards and forwards until I get a clean cut. But anyway, I used to, we used to use this blue 3M tape to lay out the stripe schemes and then transfer to the other side of the aircraft on these gigantic um, private aircraft up to, up to jet style, like, uh, you know, like business jet style. I did everything from bi, biplanes and old war planes to just private little beach crafts, four seaters and stuff. I've done all kinds of aircraft like that. I worked there for about a year, this place in Maine, when I first got out of the Air Force. That was one of my first jobs. And the techniques I learned for striping a gigantic fuselage or wings or, you know, that kind of tail fins and stuff on airplanes, I actually applied that same kind of concept to laying out the stripe designs on my knife carvings. Never would have thought it at the time that it would have transferred, but it did. 
done really well for transferring that knowledge and that skill set. All right, there we go. All right, we've got a good, good line going here. So I'm just going to keep carving away at it. And this thing is not wanting to focus very easy on me. Just focus in there, buddy. All right. Get it in there deep. Now I do all my rough lines first because as you're going around doing different carvings and crossing yourself, you're going to, you're inevitably going to get gouges like I already have some right there down here where I had a slip. So I just get the, the rough, the roughing in done first. So I've got my line carved with a fine one. And now I'm going to take the double lot Swiss made Hubilis grow babe Lorb file which you can get from like riogrand.com and places like that amazon whatever and i'm just gonna dig it in a little deeper and scrape it in there nice and good and on my termination here on the back end all right so on the termination point on the back end here i'm actually going really light and then just kind of letting it bleed off because i want to end at this black tape here so i'm just kind of letting it fade out there i'm not going super deep on the back end Pretty decent cut going here. Now sometimes you will find that your carving will work better with a different plane or direction on the knife in some directions than others. And so you kind of have to, when you're working out your design or you're working out your carving techniques, practice and play around with it. Because the orientation of the file, if you're trying to dig in, like going this direction, if I was trying to make the cut on the inside of this or the downside of that tape but the curve was going this way it's a little harder to get in there and make that curve clean because you're going to be backing against that the whole way um, they do have curved files you can do riffler files for that kind of thing they're like this but i don't have any of those right now um well the ones i have aren't very good so uh it's out in a way you want to cut out and away from your line you're swinging out and away from your line and that will make it more crisp and clean here and then you can feather the cut out that way and it all depends on what you're doing because you can do this with a round file too if you really want to take and do like a groove um, like on some of these I'll put on the screen here some of the handles I've done that are just a, a groove inside like an, a dip you know a dip carving um, round round carving concave carving whatever you want to call it you do that with a round file and you can get away with a lot more with that all right so I've got my main line is set really well I can get a fingernail down in there, I can feel it all the way. So now I'm gonna take my half round, my little half round double lot, Swiss made Hubbulus Grobe file, um, and I'm going to really start to sink this in, and I'm gonna start to feather the shelf out this way. So that does a couple things. It rounds out the bottom of the cut to make it easier to clean up. And it starts to feather and give it a smoother, like, out into the handle. Makes it look nice. And these actually have the shape of this right here. Actually helps carve a little easier and a little more control without being as harsh into the cut without a heart as harsh of a shelf it softens things up a little Ooh, there's a scratch or a little bit different perspective here to see if you can catch what I'm doing a little easier so I'm actually using the flat part of this to kind of start knocking that shelf off so there's not as just as much of a V cut in there and I'm going to clean up a lot of that with the finer of these half rounds. But let's just get this sunk in there really good. Alright, so I've got a good confident cut in here now. Nicely, nice and deep enough to where I can't get a fingernail over it, so that's good. Um, now I'm going to remove my tape. So that I can actually see what I got going on here. Okay, that worked out. 
that's nice. <sighs> All right, yeah, that's that's looking good. So, um, I'm gonna put the rest of my lines in here. I'm actually gonna take one more line over the top here and get that roughed in and then I'm gonna start to clean all these up and there's a little back and forth when it comes to clean up because I go back over each line here especially where they're gonna cross each other and I'm gonna sink them in really deep but I'm gonna do that with the finer of the two half round files because um, this is just this and this is just this type of cut there's multiple types of cut you can do with round files full round with squares with um, all kinds of stuff you can do so you gotta play around with your files and find the design and style you like but these are, I'm going to do all these with the half rounds, so they're making it basically be a cut, feathered out, and rounded off. And as you're sanding and stuff, you'll round some things down a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to get them laid out, and then I'm going to get them dug in really good and deep, and then I'm going to start to clean them up. Okie dokie. Now that we have the layout done, I've got my stripes laid out, I've got my main cuts done, I'm going to start cleaning it up with the ultra fine half round Habilis Grobe file. This one's actually very well used, but works good for cleanup. Again, cutting away from here and away from that way, so I'm spreading my cut like that. I'm just going to start cleaning these edges up. I'm feathering it in nicely. This is the easy part of the cleanup too, because after this, we gotta go to send papering. The key to some of this, um, to getting depth and detail in this, is actually layering. Layering multiple stripes like this can turn what would, you know, otherwise one or two stripes may be kind of boring in some aspects. But if you layer a couple stripes or a couple lines or a couple cuts or a couple different types of cut, it actually adds a lot of depth to a simple, what is otherwise a simple project. And now we will remove the scratches with a magic wand. This popsicle stick, this paper, and this right here. Oh, good lord. Lots of scratches. Depending on your design, um, you can risk washing this out a lot by using this if it's too obtuse on the edge here. So if that's getting a little too washy, you can take another option is to take a fine uh, doled out blade 
and you get yourself a little finer of an edge because you don't want to wash out wash out your design. Keep it nice and crispy. I'm working with 220 grit right now. Time to switch over to a 400 grit. Four hundred. Right now that I'm fairly confident, I've got all my all my gouges cleaned up here down in the cut. What I'm gonna do? is some freehand cleanup just to get my stray scratch marks off and stuff that I may have made. So I'm just gonna work this all up to about 600 grit. Honestly the the you know like the round cuts the the concave what you do with the round file they're actually a little easier to clean up than these tight V cuts are. And I gotta finish shaping the handle as well. At this point I'm gonna knock down some of these hard edges that are rough on the hand. Ooh. Huh. Man, those things mess with your eyeballs. There we go. Make sure I didn't mess up the profile too much on the back end here. Make it look weird. Round it all out nicely. This is gonna be right in my sock, so I don't want it you know rubbing rubbing a hard edge against my against my calf while I'm wearing it. So round them out a little bit, make it nice. washing out your end pieces. Some things to keep in mind when you're gonna be buffing. One, stupid hurts. You can get stupid real quick with a buffer. It's gonna wash out a little bit of your lines too. So keep that in mind while you're making your carvings. Um, it's gonna wash them out. If you get too aggressive with the buffer, it'll wash them all the way out or make them look muddy. Um, you can do this up to like two or 3,000 grit too by hand. You don't have to do it with a buffer, but ain't nobody got time for that. I'm just gonna give them a light, gentle buff down in the creases here. Knock them down a little bit, shine it up, call it.
sink a little WD-40 in the cracks. Make sure we get the buffing compound out and all the scratches are gone. Now it's time for the final reveal. All right, there it is. Look at that. Now I've got some finish work to do on the blade. I've got to finish buffing it and um, add a little bit of uh, sheath work to the process here and finish the sheath and then I'll sharpen this bad boy and it will be good to go. But see if I can get it really good here. That is it. And it does not have to be complicated to be attractive. So, that is my new skin do. This one is actually mine. I'm going to put that in my sock and wear it when I'm all kilted up. That's cool. Thank you for watching again. And I uh, hope to catch you on the next one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with some more content soon. More similar to this. Uh, some mirror polishing stuff. Definitely going to do that. But that'll be next. Y'all come back now, you hear?